follow your heart. That's advice many of us have heard. It's advice that sounds affirming and respectful of an individual and their uniqueness. But what does it mean to follow your heart? And is it really good advice? While I talk about this today, I want to invite you to subscribe to this channel and to click the bell. So I really believe that who we are most deeply, what is at the core of our being is an inner light, an illumination, this vibrancy, this source of life that really animates who we are, that that's our core. And when I hear phrases like follow your heart, I think of that light, that core as being our heart, that that's the center of who we are most deeply. And I think that one of the challenges for people today, and probably for people in many ages, is that they're not sure who they are most deeply. They're not sure who they are at heart. So if you don't know who you are at heart, how do you follow your heart? That can be very confusing. We really aren't taught to look at who we are most deeply. We're taught to fit in. What every society teaches every member of that society is to fit into the cultural norms, that there are certain ways to do things, ways of going about life. They tell us what success is, what kinds of relationships we should have, and all of these things are part of our culture. And there are differences among culture, but these messages are still there. So that when you find that who you are, who you think you are, may be inside, doesn't fit with this cultural message, there's a disconnect, there's a dissonance, and you're not really sure what to do. And the most common advice people give you is, well, fit in and you'll find your way. Or if you don't really like this idea of success, when you retire, you'll get to do what you want to do. So we don't really know how to look at who we are most deeply. In addition to that basic message that comes from our cultures, there are other messages that people get that pull them away from who they are most deeply. For instance, women in every culture are taught that their role in life is to nurture children and care for their husbands. And even in societies today where women have a lot more freedom and parity with men, there's still that basic message that motherhood and caring for children is the right way for a woman to be. And what happens when someone doesn't fit in that role, whenever that they don't feel like that's who they really are? Again, there's dissonance and there's disapproval and there's a, a, a kind of struggle to sort through that. Those kinds of struggles happen for other people as well. People who come from what are defined as racial minorities in a culture are given the message that because of who they are, because of their race, they're just not really as good and, and, and they shouldn't aspire to as much. So just, you know, stay in your place, do what you need to do, but don't try to do more than that. You know, other people will move ahead, but you don't really need to. And so we give racial minority people that kind of message that limits who they are allowed to think of themselves to be. And that's all part of structural racism. For people who make up sexual minorities, there's a different kind of message. There's a message that, you know, we really don't want to talk about you or what you're about, and we'd rather not see it. So just put a lid on it and, you know, don't tell us about it. We don't need to know. And that prevents people from really owning who they are and celebrating who they are and using their gifts and talents. So all of these things really work to prevent people from being who they are and they're different kinds of social messages. So we have that as a baseline, but then we have particular circumstances. So people who have grown up around different kinds of abuse, addictions, neglect, They've also been taught that who they are, well, don't pay attention to who they are. you are. 
you know, because of, of the kinds of abuse and neglect people experience, the messages become more and more confused. And so it takes a lot of work to find your true self. And even if you haven't had that kind of difficulty of, of living in an abusive situation or an addictive situation, if you've never had someone really pay attention to you, to listen to you and help you understand who you are, then it also can be difficult. So the odds are against our knowing who we are most deeply. So what do we do? Do we just give up on it? Do we walk away? No, I don't think that's helpful at all. Instead, I think we need to learn how to listen to our heart, to identify who we are most deeply, to be comfortable in that, and to be able to work from that core of our being. Because when we make decisions based on all these different other messages we've received, they may make sense, they may seem to be okay, but they're really unhealthy for us. It's important to move with our heart, with who we are most deeply. And to do that, we need to learn who we are most deeply. And we begin to explore that and identify that through spiritual practice. Now, as I'm talking about spiritual practice, I want to remind you that when I say the term spiritual practice, I'm not just talking about traditional spiritual practices like meditation or yoga or mindfulness. I'm also talking about other things that help us get quiet on the inside, that help us to tune in and be present. That includes things like drumming or hiking in the woods or chanting. And, you know, there's even work being done studying mindfulness meditation with skateboarding and how skateboarders naturally move into a state of mindfulness. So really, many things in life can be openings for us to that inner quiet. And it's a matter of really allowing ourselves to move into that inner quiet. And the more and more we do that, the more we find our true self and become at home in that true self. It's a process, it takes time. And sometimes in that process, we indeed need the help of mental health professionals to sort through a lot of the messages we've received growing up and to identify what's unhealthy and deformative for us. But we may also benefit from working with a spiritual director who will help us to discern who we are at heart close and trusted friends with whom we can share these kinds of thoughts can be invaluable in the process of learning to identify and listen to our heart. So yes, it's something we need to do intentionally because just to hear the words, follow your heart, well, that can leave you with a big question mark because maybe you're not sure what your heart is or what your heart is saying to you. So it's important to learn to explore who you are at heart, to identify that and to understand it and to listen and to grow in that knowledge of yourself. Thanks for being here today and listening. Subscribe to this channel, share the video, like it, click that bell so you're notified of future videos. And please know that I always appreciate the time you spend listening to Spirituality Beyond Borders. Have a great day.